Good morning. Hi, everybody. We'll give a little bit of time for folks to uh, get on into the room, so to speak. Welcome to our virtual yoga studio. I'm Belinda with Just Be Yoga, and it is Saturday morning, time for our Yoga Basics Live. I hope I'm going to see some familiar faces, so to speak. Definitely miss the old crew, uh, but we're also really happy to welcome tons of new folks to join our virtual crew. Um, Just Be Yoga has been a donation-based community outreach center for 10 years, been able to provide yoga, tai chi, meditation um, at donation or low cost, working in the public, working with organizations, uh, really happy for the work that we've been able to do to connect with people in a healthy way. So yoga basics doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but it does mean we're going to stick to the fundamentals. Today, we're going to start lying down. If you um, have a yoga block or strap, I have blocks and a strap, but you could use a book, you could use a towel or a belt, get them nearby, have them positioned. Please say hello, type in a comment. If you're having any problems, you're having any questions, let me know. Let's take full advantage of all of this interactivity that we have so we can talk to each other. Let's go ahead and make it two way rather than have it be one way. All right. It's my deep honor to be able to work with you this morning, be able to share practice. We're going to connect body, mind, breath. That's all we're going to do with yoga. Yoga means to create that connection. So we're not here to compete, not here to hurt yourself, not even here to get a workout. All right. But we are going to feel out. Oh, what's this area of my body telling me? How does this area of my body want to move? How does it not want to move? And how do I show some respect and some love to my body and my breath and my mind as I do it? All right. Welcome. I see folks are here again. Feel free to say hello. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to come lying down on our mat. All right. Let's walk the feet in. And just start to let the body go. Invite yourselves to arrive. Feel what's going on. Give some time for your mind to fully arrive on your mat and let go of anything else you've been thinking about. Feel your breath in your chest and your belly. Feel your bones, weight of your flesh. Maybe decide on something you want to keep as your main focus, your intention for your practice. Why are you here? Good. Don't turn your head. Let's gently lift the hips. Don't go to your max. Just do it a little and lower. Try to have your feet about three inches apart, knees about three inches apart, just for some good alignment. And then let's press down through the feet and lift the hips and gently lower. Let's gently lift, breathe in, see if the breath can match the movement and breathe out as we lower. No pressure and lift. Find something you enjoy about feeling this movement. Exhale, lower. Find something you enjoy about letting it go. Breathe in and lift. Let's hold. Breathe. Do it as softly as you can. No stress. Good. Let's gently lower it down. Keep the feet where they are. We'll drop the knees on over to the left. And bring them up and over to the right. Now be careful if the knees don't like this or you have some injury in the knees. Don't push very far. Or skip anything that doesn't feel good. Anything that's starting to create a really dangerous kind of feeling. We'll start to try to distinguish between discomfort and danger. That's a part of the connection that yoga helps us build and create. I like to say that yoga helps us develop awareness muscles as well as our physical muscles. Feel your spine. Just get some fluidity. Start to warm some things up. 
Let's come to center, bottoms, the feet together, knees falling open. If you're comfortable doing so, okay? This is a really vulnerable space. <sighs> Let's bring the hands behind our head and gently lift your chin up to the ceiling. And we won't bend the neck and lower the head down. All right, let's breathe in and lift the chin up. Keep the elbows wide. Just isolating our core, lifting up gently. Don't go to your max. And lower. And breathe in. And lower. Elbows stay wide. Let's breathe in and, lo and lift. Oh, that's so solid. And lower. Good. Let's bring the inner thighs together. Bring one knee to the chest. Give it a hug. Give the uh, Bring the other knee in. If you want to rock and roll, feel free to rock and roll. Let it be simple. Let it be fun. Let it be playful. Now let your spine rest. We'll keep the knees together. And let's trace an imaginary circle on the ceiling with our knees. And maybe you can feel that massage in your low back against the floor, against your mat. Feel your breath. Feel the muscles in your face, your throat, your neck. Feel the skin on your whole body. Change direction of your circle. Accept all of the support that the earth is giving us. Good. Let's keep the knees in. Open the arms out wide. Or you could bend your elbows. I call it goalpost arms. And we can let the knees come over to whatever side you want. Just a nice little twist. Notice what the spine has to say this morning. Hopefully you didn't eat. Try not to eat an hour before class. And if you do, just a piece of fruit or something. You want to keep the contents kind of empty so we can work on eliminating out of our organs, building that connection to our digestive process. And we'll bring it back up. Feel that core helping us. And we'll bring the knees over to the other side. Breathe in. Breathe out. What are we accepting? What are we learning? How does the body want to move this morning? Let's use all of this as a nice check-in so that we're informed as we move and go, oh yeah, my low back told me this. Oh yeah, my hamstrings told me that. Oh yeah, my busy mind told me I'm kind of scattered. We're just doing a diagnostic right now. Breath in. Breath out. And let's bring the knees back to center. See if you can bring your hands behind your knees. Now you can have a little space in between your thighs if you like. And just pull the knees toward the belly. Try to be aware of pushing your spine into the floor. And just notice how it makes you feel. Does it make you feel more solid? Try not to strain. And let's lift the head, tuck the chin in, and bring the head down. Ah, notice how that felt in your spine. Maybe a stretch in your whole back. If you want, let's lift and do it again. Tuck the chin in. Feel your neck in between your shoulders. And bring your head down. Let's go ahead and straighten the legs. You could rest your arms. Let's point and flex. Feel your feet, feel your ankles, maybe look at them, notice something about them, don't judge anything, don't notice stuff and go, I need to fix this or fix that. Ankle rotations, change direction. Good. Awesome. All right, let's reach the arms up toward the toes. Keep your shoulder blades in the earth. Now let's lift the chin, lift the arms up, and lower. Whoa, what are we feeling in the middle of us? 
and lift and lower. Soften everything when you come to the earth. Take the rest when you can. And now let's lift and feel engagement inside of us, our power. And lower. Bring the knees in. Maybe rock. Relax your face. Relax your neck. Good. Let's bring the feet down. Straighten the right leg. Hold on behind the hamstring. Pull that leg as close as it wants to go. We're still early this morning. Now bring your hand to your inner thigh and see if that leg wants to fall open to the right. It doesn't have to touch the floor. Honor where it wants to stop. Accept whatever is going on. Change anything that doesn't feel good. Notice your breath. Good. Let's bring that leg back up. And we'll switch it out. Bring that right foot down. Straighten the left leg. Hold on behind that leg. Don't be in a hurry. Saturday morning. Let's pull that leg as close as it wants to come. Notice what you're feeling in the back of the leg. Honor its boundaries, its stop point. Find a breath. And then let's see how much our body wants to open for us, how much we are willing to listen and not take it beyond where it wants to go. Our yoga practice is not for us to dominate our body, not for us to make our bodies bend to our will. Instead, we're here as a unified unit, listening and respect and collaboration. Starting to practice that. Maybe we're, we're not good at it. Maybe throughout the week we're really dominating mind over matter and all that crap. Let's not let that be our yoga space. We'll bring that leg back up. Good. Let's bring the foot down. Keep your gaze up. Don't turn the head. Press down through the feet. Lift the hips. Breathe in. Exhale. Lower it down. Let's roll on over to one side. And gradually bring ourselves up to our hands and knees. Good morning. Hi, Katusha. Gaia, yay. Good morning. Good to see you all. All right, let's come on up to our hands and knees. Now we've changed our perspective. Our face is down to the earth. We're not looking up to the heavens. We're now looking down to what's solid and firm. Ha, ah, feel your way. Get your arms ready. Get your legs ready. Check in. Good. And then we'll find a few bowing and flexings of the spine. Let's breathe in, drop the belly down, lift the gaze. Feel your skin, your muscles. Feel your emotions. Where are we this morning? Exhale, round the spine. Ah, let's bring some joy, not so much seriousness. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze. And seriousness can be joy. Exhale, round. Be grateful for any amount of movement we can feel. Inhale, arch and left. Exhale, round. Whatever moves, let it move. Whatever doesn't want to move, let's forgive it and move on. Let's find a neutral space. Feel free to shake your wrists out now and again. Now, if you're feeling like your wrists are getting really compressed and starting to ache, you could always rest on the knuckles of your fist. That'll take some pressure out of that carpal tunnel, all right? All right, so I'm gonna hang out here with that. And let's reach the right leg straight back and just explore extension. How long can that leg be? How much do we know about it? Can the torso lengthen long and forward as well, through your chest, through your neck? If there was a mirror under your face, what would be looking back at you? Have it be the face that you want to see, the face that you envision for yourself. Breathe in and exhale, pull the knee in. Let's take it out, up and back, gentle hip rotations. Starting to feel out some fluid movement in those hips. 
notice any emotions that come about, right? When we're working these hips, that's a real sensitive space, right? So if we're feeling self-conscious, okay, if something's getting stimulated sensually, that's natural. Our hips are the second chakra. It's the house of all of our sensuality, our sense pleasure, change direction. Stop when you want, okay? So if your body's feeling heated, something is starting to feel like a strain take a pause come to your breath remember we're not here to work out we're here to connect let's come to center bring the knee down come up to standing just a little break shake the wrists out let's reach the arms out reach them back behind you find an interlace or hold your strap or towel now's a good time for that if you need a bind open the collarbones Send the hips forward, making ourselves so uninhibited. But be kind, be gentle. We don't just say, okay, I can open everything. When we're not ready to open everything, under where you are emotionally, it's a huge part of this journey, right? And if there's something that you need to hold back, keep holding it back. It's okay. Ah, let's release. Okay, the last thing you want to do is like use your yoga as a way to traumatize yourself, right? We're not here to beat ourselves up. I like to say, are you practicing or are you punishing yourself? All right, wrists under shoulders, knees under hip bones. We'll work that other leg, lengthen it back. What can we appreciate about this leg? What can we appreciate about this feeling? This leg holding itself up unsupported. Kind of jamming on this uh, this little YouTube playlist. It's all right. <laughs> all right. Breathe in. Exhale. Let's bring the knee in. Out, up, and back. In, out, up, and back. How smooth can it be? What are we learning about different regions in the groin, inner thigh, our back, our low back? The gluteus, right? The butt muscles have some big work to do. Your arms and your wrists are probably like, hey, what about me? But what's going on in your neck and your face? Is anything tensing up? Does it need to? Let's change direction. Ah, what are you connecting with that you haven't connected with in a while? Sensation wise. Can you let go of an expectation, a demand, and just accept? Feel. We'll bring that knee down. Bringing ourselves up. I neglected to say this the last time around. Try to have one fist width in between the inner thighs, just to keep the bones underneath of your hips in a nice, good alignment. This time, let's see about bringing our hands to the low back, fingertips aiming down. See if you can notice where your hips are. Now, you might already be feeling a stretch in your thighs, in your hips. Try not to have any pinchy feeling in your low back. And let's ask our ribs to grow tall. Can we practice that intention? Say, I want to go that way. I don't want to go that way. I want to go this way. And maybe you're like, but I'm not feeling anything. But you know that your intention is there. So let's breathe and just accept the intention. And then invite, can I be that open? Am I willing to be that vulnerable? Am I willing to be that unguarded? And that's hard in the state of life as we're living it right now. Everything in your physical being can be like, are you kidding me? We need to protect, we need to shield up. Ah, but there are parts of us that can't hold that tense space forever, right? So let's use this yoga maybe as a space to kind of air out the rug, to shake it out. We can shield up and guard up later. Breathe in, lift the chest. Good. Let's bring the hands down. All right, we're going to do a counter pose and come into our child's pose. If, because we've been on these knees for a little minute, if you need, always have a blanket or something nearby. Sometimes doubling up a mat is a good idea if your knees are feeling sensitive to have too much weight on them. So maybe you put a blanket down under your knees. If you're good, we can widen those knees out and we'll let the hips sink back. Now, you might have seen that sometimes people keep their toes tucked here. 
that's cool. If you want to feel the stretch in your toes and your arches, you can invite that. Maybe your feet are like, hey, you could have left me out of this. You know, feel that out and say, no, nope, I need to connect with you. Hey, toes, we have not had this kind of conversation in a really long time. All right, so let's just say I'm here to connect. I'm not here to make demands of you. My toes are saying, you know what, Belinda, it feels like a demand. I think you're full of crap. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Breathe. So now I'm going to untuck and just have the tops of my feet down. And I'm stretching the tops of my feet. That does let my hips sink back more. And you start to feel a stretch in the low back, maybe, in your low belly. I usually try to hesitate to say, this is what you will feel and where you will feel it. Because you've got a different body. I've got a different body. We all did different things in these bodies yesterday, the day before, all our lives. So I can't say. I can say anatomically some areas that might be touched. But what you're going to feel, you're going to feel. So let's breathe. Adjust in ways to find some ease. Maybe you don't even know what ease is. So change something, check it out, say, do I like it, do I not like it? Am I neutral? Okay, I learned something. Now let's lengthen the arms out. Now try to pull the shoulders back into socket. So now I'm going to slide my arms back and pull the shoulders back into socket. I'm going to ask the ribs, remember when I talked about growing tall when we were on those knees? Can I ask the ribs, the sides of my ribs, to lengthen forward? I'm asking my brain to connect with that area of my body. And some parts of that go, I don't know if, I, if that ever talks to one another. And that's okay. I'm creating, learning, new connections, new synapses connecting. Yoga. And let's come on forward to hands and knees. And now let's see what's going to happen. We're going to tuck those toes again. Bring the knees in a little closer. All right. We're just going to lift the knees a little. Breathe. Notice what's going on in your mind. Especially if your mind's like, well, wait a minute. What is this? Why aren't we in the down dog? What is this? What is this? Ask yourself. Feel it. Where am I? What's going on? What's working? What's doing too much work? Could I even out the work? Gently lower those knees down. Ah, good. Let's stack knees under hips, palms under wrists. Sorry, the palms under shoulders. And we'll twist the right arm up. All right, how much does the chest want to open? You can keep your gaze down. Now ask yourself, what's twisting? Is it just my shoulders? Could I ask the middle of the spine? How do I balance out this movement? So you notice an area that's doing the most work, and could you ask another region of the spiral to try to move? What do you have to connect with to feel that? And let's release, I'm gonna switch it out, bringing the right arm down, twisting. Feel your bones, feel your flesh. This is your earth suit. This is the house you live in. How well do you know it? What areas of it do we need to clean out? We've let some junk accumulate. Ha, ah, maybe there's some rooms you've never like sat in and watched the sunrise. Let's feel that. And bring this left hand down. I want to step the right foot up. You know what? Let's bring that back. Let's pay attention. Okay, I'm going to pretend like I actually was in the room with you and I might have heard something. All right? So, let's see. Can I lift the knee? Can I open it? Can I extend it? Can I step it? Can I pause before it even touches the earth and place it down silently? Oh, we did a thing, right? Let's bend that right knee. And then let's lift, bring it back. What did we learn about how heavy that leg is? What did we learn about how much our oblique and our waist has to help us get there? Did we remember to take our breath with us on the journey? These are all legit. Breathe. All right, here we go. We're going to lift that left leg 
Open the hip. We're going to step it up patiently. Feel the difference from side to side. Don't place it on the earth yet. And then slowly, deliberately place it down with love. Say, hey, left leg, how you doing? Ah, and we'll sink down in that front hip to say hello. How much does it want to move? We'll shift it back. Ready? We're going to do that in reverse one more time. So we'll see if we can just lift that foot up, breath, out, and back. We learned so much. All right. Feel free to shake the wrists out if you need. Palms, shoulder width apart. Trying to stack your wrists underneath of your shoulders. Stacking ourselves in good alignment so we give the muscles and the bones some good equilibrium in doing their work. We'll tuck the toes. Ready, just an inch. Feel. What are your back muscles doing? Is all your weight back? Is all your weight forward? Ooh, what are your belly muscles doing? What are your arms doing? Could your legs do more? Push the heels back. Even it out. Even it out. Now, ask the butt to go up. Drop your head down. Ah, and just notice the sensations in your mind as we do this. We can pedal the heels up and down. Feel the backs of those legs. Maybe scan right now. Are there areas of the body we haven't even said hello to yet today? I hope that we've said hello to some good amount of our bodies. Ah, see if you can tilt your butt up and down a little. The tailbone up and down. Wake up your awareness of your pelvis. Could you soften your neck and just let the weight of all those thoughts hang heavy? Let them go. We'll bring the left knee down. All right. So the reason I did all of that care before is I'd like us to be really intentional, deliberate, taking care as we move. Don't just throw the body around. Connect. Right? We're building connection in how we move and how things feel. We're going to bring that knee up. Step that right foot up, place it down. Look at the foot, make sure it's straight ahead. Knee over heel, maybe use a block, tuck the back toes, straighten the back leg. We'll step the left leg up, still the same care, bringing it up. Good, let's breathe in and pull the spine upward. Nice flat shelf. Exhale, let the upper body go. First time on our feet. Maybe sway gently side to side. Let it go. Move your hips, move your knees. Nobody needs to give you permission to move in an expressive way. What does your body want to express? What does your breath want to express? What do you want to feel move? Good, we'll slowly roll the spine upright, calm the standing, lift your head last, don't be in a hurry. Ah, first time standing upright and erect. Your feet could be apart, they could be together, feel out what feels good for your thighs, your hips. And we'll roll the shoulders up, back and down. Oh, we don't have all of that body weight and gravity from us being on hands and knees. What do we need to work out? What do we need to thank these shoulders for, for all the support that they just gave us for that sequence we did on the floor? Good. Change direction. You don't have to do them two at a time. Remember what I said about expressive? Hey, we can do it two ways, right? It isn't any less yoga. You're connecting, hopefully. Can you feel your shoulder blades? Can you feel the upper arm bones? Can you feel your collar bones? Can you feel your chest? What are you connecting with? What moves? What works together? Good. Let's work the chin up and down. Now, while we work upward, don't lose your awareness of your legs and your feet. Don't abandon your anchoring. Left and right. How does this neck want to move? Ah, neck rotations. Change direction. Mm -hmm. 
Notice how the muscles in the neck are connected in the spaces in between the shoulder blades down your back. Slow your roll. Learn something. Negotiate with something. Compromise with something. For ease and steadiness. And then let's come up to our mountain. So mountain pose is the basics of standing. Look at your feet. Make sure they're not cocked out in some sort of angle. Try not to lock the knees. So we get to learn how are we standing in our frame. Try not to have the butt pooched back. So we're going to scoop the tailbone under. Ask the front of the ribs to lift the torso upright. Right? Because the muscles, all of that flesh is what's holding up these bones. This skeleton wouldn't be able to do anything without all of that activation. Life source first, and right, so all that spirit is in there giving all this flesh some life, but that flesh is holding these bones into a shape, into a direction that we want. So feel them do that work. Oh, the muscles in the belly actually have to lift this rib cage, give it support, okay? The spinal muscles are giving them some structure and support, but the core is giving it the energy. Shoulders down. What's lifting the back of your neck and your head so that your head isn't falling over to one side? What's doing that? Ah, now feel the breath, feel the organs inside of you. Where's the weight in your feet? Do you know? Change it up a little. Notice how that affects certain muscles. Be more in the pinky edge. Be more in your heels. Play, explore. Let's breathe in and lengthen upward. Where are you reaching from? I'm not going to tell you where to reach from. What are you learning? Play. Here, I did a little bit more extra through my right rib cage. And I said, well, that kind of curved me. I'm going to do a little bit more through my left rib cage. Huh, okay, that balanced me out. Oh, through the front of my belly. No, that doesn't feel good on my low back. Play. Breath in. Let's grow tall. Exhale. Hinge at the hips, come forward. Now, if your hamstrings are super tight, go ahead and lightly bend the knees and just let your upper body hang. Ooh, let your inner diagnostician start to scan what's going on. Can you feel in between each toe? Make space in your toes. What are my feet doing? What are my ankles doing? How are they handling all of this weight compressing down into all those bones? Have I ever given it any thought? Ooh, what am I feeling in the backs of my calves? If you shift back and forth in the feet, you might change some of the stretch point in the backs of those legs and learn a little more. I like to say keep those knees soft as we're starting to give some forgiveness to the hamstrings. But if your body will accept it, go ahead and start to straighten those legs a bit. Let the upper body hang. Your hands could be on a block. Now we come up the backs of the legs. You might feel one solid line up the backs of those legs. Maybe you're feeling it dispersed along the sides, wrapping around those legs. What are you feeling? Different zones, whether you know what those muscles are or not. Feel the bones of your low back now and your hips and pelvis. Can they hang heavy? Ungrip with the feet. Let the upper back hang. What's not trusting that you can let that go? What's not entirely sure it wants to feel these feelings? Sensation feelings, emotional feelings. And let's gradually, slowly curve the spine, stacking vertebra by vertebra up, coming upright to stand. Maybe keep your eyes closed. Invite yourself to explore so much of the terrain of sensation and awareness. We're gaining information. We're becoming more informed, more connectedly informed. All right. Find where you can feel stable in your mountain. We're going to root into our left leg and ask our right leg to lift, maybe just an inch off the floor. 
breathe. Now notice, don't have a thought in your brain that started to say, oh, I gotta be perfect. Or, oh shit, we're balancing. No, let's let that go. Bring that leg down. Position yourself near a wall if you like. Maybe have a chair or a piece of furniture nearby to give yourself support, okay? Because we're not doing anything perfectly. We have been standing and feeling ourselves stand on both feet, sending them appreciation, saying, hey, how you doing? Let me learn something about how you carry me around. And now all we're doing is saying, hey, lefty, what you got? And lefty could be like, wait, I wasn't ready. And you say, okay, cool. You weren't ready. How do I make you ready? Can I give you some stability? Can I stand up? Hey, rest of me, can you help out left leg? Because it's about to do a really hard thing. That's the smallest amount of surface that we're about to ask our body to be the support for the rest of the body. All right, so let it be an inch. Can you stay in your mountain? Or did everything start to shrink down? Can we stay standing? And we're learning, we're not perfecting, we're just practicing. Practicing, AKA play. Let's bring that down. I'm gonna bring in this little thought, this little thought, and maybe my friend Sarah will appreciate this, she's here. Let's switch legs, I'm gonna just yap a little bit. We're gonna root into the right, we're gonna lift the left. I started to learn when I was doing a, a lot more serious yoga practice, that I was taking the word practice and I really meant a certain amount of intensity, a certain amount of commitment and discipline that I brought to things, right? Whether it was from a history of practicing intensely musically, whether it was from a history of practicing intensely uh, when it came to martial arts. So I had to start to change my thought pattern about that word. Let's bring that down. And play became a wonderful way. And I don't mean like even in playing musically, I just mean play as in having fun. Um, and more forgiving when it came to play, okay? So let's see, can we do that again? Lifting, ah, this left leg, play. Because you know what, we're doing a lot. There are so many nerves in our nervous system doing a butt ton right now. Can we honor them? Every quiver that we're feeling is an adjustment. It's a micro adjustment. We are a butt ton of miracles happening right now. And we're aware of it, sentience, consciousness. Let's not take any of it for granted. Maybe lift that knee a little higher, bring that foot down, breathe in, grow tall. Exhale, let's side bend. Ooh, let's move this way. And breathe in, feel your rootedness through your legs. Exhale, over. Ah, root, lift, lengthen, exist in this suit. How much is your spirit filling up inside of you? How much space does your spirit take up in your body? Breathe in. Shouldn't it fully occupy it? Shouldn't it try to beam beyond the limits of our skin and come forward? Ha! Ah. Now what's changed in the forward fold? What's changed in this moment about anything? Our awareness? our awareness of certain areas of the body. And let's gradually, slowly roll the spine up. All right, so we've done some reclining. We've done core in reclining. We've worked on the hips in the reclining. We've done some kneeling, worked some core, worked some hips. We uh, stood in a kind of camel on the knees, stretching out the front of us, a little bit of heart opener. And we've come to stand and we've worked some of the backs of the legs, okay? We're going to widen the legs out here. We've also lengthened the spine, stretching, so to speak, of the back. And we've been working the mind a lot. Bring the feet out a little wide. Now, see if you can aim the toes toward one another. Everybody respect where the body wants to go, all right? Now, notice what you're feeling. Feel a little bit of tightness, just a tightness, not a bad thing, but just a little tension, a little puffy tightness around my calves rolling that way. My knees feel okay. I do want you to feel the caution of the knees, okay? So if the knees are feeling any discomfort, take that as a warning, change the angle, come out of it, don't go into that intensity. Now where I really feel some, some stuff is along the sides of these hips, okay? A lot of times when we talk about opening our hips or I need a hip opener, we're only talking about going that way. 
well, guess what? Our hips move this way as well. And so we want to give it some attention because this way we rarely do. The other way we do a lot more. All right. So now bring the hands to the low back and just push forward and lift the belly button and breathe. Let your tummy poof out. Let go of any optics you got in your mind about what yoga should look like. And let's just go for all the ooey gooey feels. I've been doing a lot of imperfect baking right now. So that means that I won't take a picture of it and post it. But man, it's, it's some pretty good stuff. It may not look great, but it's some pretty good yummy stuff. Let's let our yoga be that. Let's not worry about what it looks like. But you know all these ingredients are mixing together for some yum. All right, now we're going to come forward, all right? See if you can keep your legs where they are. We'll come forward. You could have your block. You could have a chair. Maybe your hands come down. Maybe you notice you don't go as far with the legs turned this way. Can you breathe? Can you use your exhales to help you eliminate, eliminate attention, eliminate a mental obstacle, Eliminate a physical tension, a physical obstacle. Eliminate some impatience. Now, are you on the left side more than the right? Do you know? Could you do an adjustment? Maybe do a little sway from left leg to right leg. Ooh, I'm feeling some different stuff there. Unbunch your toes. Can you let the upper body go? Shift forward and back in the feet. If you come back into the heels more, that might intensify the hamstring experience. Shifting forward more might intensify the back. Are you remembering to take your breath with you? And let's lightly bend the knees, roll the spine up. Yeah, try to give yourself this opportunity to do that kind of movement a couple of times a day. If you can, if you can do it at least once a day, great. Inward rotation of the hips opens your sacrum, your super duper low back, just above your tailbone, but just beneath your lumbar spine. Let's go ahead now and open the legs wide and have the feet in a parallel position. Maybe your feet are a little happier now. Ha! Ah. Good. So we're a little wide. Maybe your ankles might be able to be under where the wrists would be if you were extended out. And let's rotate the wrists, forearms, upper arms. Go ahead and round the spine. Tuck the chin in. Let's start from the wrists, rotating forward up, forearms, upper arms. Good. Thrust the hips forward. Let the chest roll open. And again, rolling it under, curving the spine. Notice what you feel, what areas really like this in your back, and then roll it open. What about the shoulders, getting a nice open space, arms open nice and big. Good, let's roll it under one more time if you like. Maybe you're taking a break, that would be awesome. And we'll reach the hands behind us, maybe get, grab your strap, and we'll send the wrists down. I'll turn sideways. Send the wrists down, lengthening the arms downward. Maybe give a little give in the thighs. Hips forward. <laughs> it's yoga. It's fine. The body moves in however many ways it moves. It's not meant for just one thing. We'll send the hips forward. Wrist down. Chest up. Up. Open the collarbones. Not back. Now draw the chest up. What muscles do you need to lift your waist off your hips? How much space can we make for breathing? Good. Lift the wrists up and back. We're going to bring the chin and the chest forward. And let your upper body come forward. Now go ahead and bend the knees if you like that. If that takes some pressure off of those hamstrings. A lot going on here. We're trying not to fall. It might be super intense in the shoulders and the chest. Maybe that's the area where we're trying to hold up the whole world on our shoulders. 
Maybe it just can't move that fast. What's going on in your hips and your low back? Same deal. Maybe it hasn't moved in a while. Maybe it wants to move. It just needs some time. It's like, wait a minute, just give me a second. Maybe you've never tried to let so much go out of your neck and your head. Maybe we don't believe that we can. We'll release the arms. Practice this. Practice the faith and the trust that you can let go. And that you can feel that. That you're allowed to feel that release. We have to envision it. We have to own it. We have to give ourselves permission. We can't ask the world to go easier on us. We've got to learn how to do it. Because you know what? The world is going to keep throwing all that crap at us. Believe you can let go and you don't have to hold so tight around your bones. That you're not going to come apart. That you don't have to grip so hard. Make room in your body for your breath. We'll bring the hands down. And then bring your knees down. Let's go back to child's pose. Maybe your inner thighs are together. Maybe they're apart. Maybe they're somewhere in between. New diagnostic. And then meet yourselves where you are. The closer together the thighs are, the more confined we feel. So that could be a real triggering thing if we have some trauma with confinement. It can be really limiting on the breath. All of that compression can be too much. So remember, practice, not punishment. Let's lay ourselves down out in front of us. So I'm just going to walk my arms forward. I'm going to lay my belly down. Bring your forearms out in front of you. See if you can keep your forearms parallel like railroad tracks, elbows under the shoulder joint, palms flat, inner thighs as close together as you can. Feel your hip bones on the floor. Feel your belly button on the floor. If you need to move some fabric or some belly flesh, do so. Try to feel as much as you can flush with the earth. Now feel your forearms, not your elbows digging, okay? The whole flat surface of the forearms pressing down. Pull the breastbone, your sternum upward, chin down, shoulder blades back. Breathe fully in the tummy. Relax your buttocks. As you breathe in, maybe apply some pressure downward through the hands, pulling the chest up with ease. Feel that point, that fulcrum point between forcing and just applying. Be in your breath, be in the lift. Where's the balance between all of it, between breathing, lifting, relaxing the chin, quieting the mind. Shoulder blades back. Up through the back of your neck. Lift up through the back of the neck. Let's gently lower the chest down. Turn your head to one side. You can let your 
cheek rest on your hand pillows. Let go. What are we aware of as we feel our abdomen fill with breath and expand against the floor? Thank your organs. Thank all of your bodily functions here. Notice any critical thought at all and bring it back to something positive, something out of gratitude. You woke up. You're here. You're able-bodied. You're able to share love and kindness to other people. Gratitude. Turn your head to the other side. Check in with the muscles in your shoulders and your neck. Is there something still tensing? Can your mind and body work together? Collaborate to let something go? Notice what is it that you needed to access to do that? Was it trust? Was it sending some love to yourself? Was it just acknowledging the awareness? A permission space. All right, let's roll ourselves over onto our backs. Take your time. Be aware. Feel your body weight shifting, your bones rolling. If you've got the space, just flop where you are. How do we practice acceptance if we don't take an opportunity? We just practice acceptance. What is it like to occupy my body in this full out flop? And let's gradually bring the feet a little closer together, knees up to the ceiling. So we're back to where we started. Cross the right ankle above your left knee. Now, if you don't have any knee or hip issues, see if you can just ask the muscles of the right leg to press your right knee forward and down. Feel that hip open. Otherwise, just don't do it. Just hold on here with the ankle wherever it is. What's your hip and groin asking of you right here? Is it saying, ooh, give me more? Is it saying, hey, 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 slow down? And how are you responding? Now, let's roll to the left. So I'm going to let the side of my left thigh come to the floor. Right foot down. See if you can ask your low back to twist to the right. And notice what we notice. Can you relax your groin and pelvis here? You could let the chest open. How much of us is willing to take being open when the opportunity is there? Do we even notice when life has us twisted? Where we have a chance to actually be open and be like, hey, things are okay over here. It's just a little twisted over there. Breathe here. Live in peace in the twist. Living gratitude in the open. And let's bring ourselves back to center. Now let's see if we can keep the ankles crossed. And we'll lift the left knee. If you want, you can hold the back of that left hamstring. You can thread the needle here. 
Some of you might like to bring your hands up on top of that left knee. All of that is going to depend on how much you can fold in here. If this is super duper tight, back it up. Just hold on behind the hamstring. Okay? Let's not apply force here that's like strangling. Remember, we're practicing, not punishing ourselves. Soften the bones in your spine. Soften your neck. Live in the breath. Be in gratitude for the breath. Soft, velvety, smooth, calm breath. Maybe rocking, cradling gently side to side. Get to know anything that's intense here. Let it introduce itself to you. And why don't you as a spirit introduce yourself to it? Greet it in this moment. Don't greet yourselves in any past moment. Let go of the memory of how you used to move, how something used to feel. Let's just be right here. Let's gently release, uncross the leg. Let's let the bottoms of the feet come together. Let the inner thighs fall open. Oh. Feel free to do that with me. Let's take a breath in. Make a sound. Oh. Sound is energy. Breath moves energy. What's stuck? What's cramped in there? What's gotten congested in us? We are energetic beings. Now let's bring the feet down, knees up. Maybe wake up the feet, stomp a little. And when you're ready, we'll cross the left ankle above the right knee. Maybe if this knee and hip allow, you could press that left knee forward and down. Don't use the hand to apply pressure. Ask the muscles in your hips and thighs to do it themselves. Feel the collaboration of the right foot pushing into the earth, giving you the leverage, giving you the anchoring for movement in that left hip. Shoulders don't have to be involved. Notice when we're bringing our all into something and we don't need to, the rest can chill. Yeah, hips, go ahead and do that. Upper body, take the chill. Ah, let our bodies inform us of how we carry our work and our stress and what needs to be working, what doesn't. We'll relax that pressure, roll over to the right. Oh. Feel the difference on this side. Already my left side is like, oh yeah, slow your roll, you're thirsty. Breathe. Letting my upper body take that chill, open, floating feeling. Let my bottom body take this twist, this ringing out. Let it inform me. What have I stuffed down into this region of the body? What is this twist helping me release from whatever it is I shoved away? I pushed down to avoid, or I said, I'll get to that later. Well, now is the later. Breathe, forgive, accept. Be with what's right here. We don't have to look at all of it. Just whatever we're feeling right here. And if a feeling's coming out that wants to cry, let the cry out. If the feeling is in there that wants to laugh, let the laugh out. And we'll slowly calm back up. Oh, I got an ache in there. I don't know what I've been doing. 
And when you're ready, we'll hug that right knee in, no rush. Got to accept this side. This side doesn't want me to pull it so close so fast. That back of that left thigh, that hip, that piriformis is really tight over here. Rest the spine into the floor. Maybe rock. Maybe this side doesn't even want the rocking. Right? Don't force a rock on yourself. Let's try not to use our yoga as a way to kind of impose something on ourselves where we go, this is good for you. You should be doing. Let's not should all over the yoga. Because if your body's like, hey, let's wait right here, that's what it wants. Say, okay, we're just going to do the breathing thing. We're going to do the gratitude thing. We're going to do the breath, let a sound out thing. But slowly release, uncrossing the leg. Inner thighs together, wiggle the feet wide. This is the equivalent of what we did standing, aiming the toes toward one another. If you need to go, I thoroughly understand I'm a little over on time. It's a character defect or it's just a thing I do. So um, if you've got to go, I thoroughly understand. But if you can hang out, let's just let the knees fall left and right. A gentle rocking movement, windshield wiper blading, feeling those inner thighs, feeling our low back sides of the thighs, stretching out that IT band. Invite some languish. Invite some, I've got all day. Not going for how anything looks, but definitely going for all of the ooey gooey feels. We'll come to center and we'll straighten one leg out and just let it go flop. In your time when you're ready, lengthen the other leg out, place it down mindfully. And then let it go flop. Maybe adjust your shoulders. Let the arms fall the way you like. Adjust your head and your neck. And then let go. Resist the urge to change, fix anything here allow the eyelids to remain open be aware of your eyes taking in light and shape color be aware feel your eyes seeing Be aware of your sense of touch and all of the sensors around your body, around your skin, feeling pressure and weight, temperature, texture, clothing, air. Weight of your bones and your flesh. Inside sensory perception. Feel the weight of your tongue. How much sensory awareness is inside of your mouth? Inside of your nasal passageway.
Be aware of your breath as a body, a volume, a being unto itself. Be present in awareness, in stillness and silence. Non-distracted, non-reactive. Start to invite simple movements, whatever that means to you. Feel your body responding to your mind. Feel your mind responding to sensation and movement in your body. Connected, union, no one entity or body or being dominating. Now build in that awareness of breath, movement, and mind. And we'll eventually bring ourselves upright to a seated space. To mindfully depart from our practice with that same harmony and union that we've been developing in our practice today. So be in the body. How is it sitting upright? Don't lose that connection, the connection that the hips and the spine wanted to talk to us. We want to carry that conversation off of the mat. We don't build this conversation and say we only have that conversation here. Oh, let's take that conversation with us. May it inform us so we don't knock stuff over when we're reaching for stuff on the cabinet. So we don't bump into stuff. So we don't trip and fall because we're building all of that wonderful union and awareness inside of body and breath and mind. Maybe we'll start to notice, ooh, I hold my breath a whole bunch when I'm waiting for somebody to give me a response. And you say, oh, but I really need that breath. Me and my breath, we've been creating this relationship. All righty. If you'd like to join, we'll do a single ohm. Ohm is said to be the primordial sound or unstruck sound. What does an unstruck sound mean? It means that nothing came together but sound emanated. Is that possible? Right? So we're saying that it's the sound that was created when the beginning of the universe happened, the Big Bang. And that that reverberation, because sound is sound waves, and those waves are still moving. That when we ohm, our ohm connects in with that primordial sound that has existed since the beginning of time. So then we're yoking, we're connecting to source. Or you could just say, I just want to hear my, hear my voice, hear the voice and authentic sound of me, however you want to feel it. Or you just want to have a vibrational massage for your organ. You could say ohm, you could say home, you could say amen. Or you could not do anything at all. Relax your throat, wide open throat, relax your diaphragm. Nice deep breath in if you're joining. Hands to the heart center at the Anjali Mudra, if you like, or you can keep your hands on your lap. 
All that is love and kindness in me recognizes that same space in you. And that's English for namaste. Namaste, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining. Feel free to hang out for a moment if you like. If you've got any questions, um, feel free to check out any of our classes. Our home yoga practice is a daily uh, class that's live streamed, but on our playlists on YouTube here or on Facebook. And that really gives a, a kind of a step-by-step -step, uh, how to set up a plan for your practice, set up an amount of time. Um, how do you develop your own home yoga practice? There's a theme every week. This past week, it was flexibility. You can hang out. 1130, we're going to do our Empower Yoga class. Work a little bit more, maybe a little hotter, but we still are doing yoga, not going beyond our edges. We've been donation-based for 10 years. Feel free to contribute if you like, if you've got it in your heart or your pocket, paypal.me slash yoga. It is my deep honor to be able to share my understanding and my practice of yoga with you. That's all I'm doing. I don't even like to say that I'm teaching. I'm just sharing and you're sharing your understanding with me. So speaking of share, if you got anything to say, let's interact. Um, otherwise, it's just Belinda sitting in a room looking at this camera. Yeah. That. <laughs> Oh, all righty. I'm going to go in about two minutes and give myself just a little gap in between this class and my 1130 power. So if anybody has anything to say, oh, yeah, Kala, oh, you told me how to pronounce that, Gaia. Uh, Kalai Vanakam, Kalai Vanakam. Kalei Vanakam, tell me if I'm getting it. <laughs> oh, but thank you so much for sharing with me. I just feel so honored. Got to meet you in like real life, real person um, sometime soon. Uh, Katusha, if you're still here, feel free. Let me know like if there's anything um, that came up for you or anything that you need from your practice. Oops, oops, I just read that, Sarah. Um, oops. Uh, if you think it was about you, then it was about you. It, it, you know, I'm always just calling myself out. And that's the truth, y'all. If I'm speaking about something, when I say I'm sharing my practice with you, I'm calling myself out, right? Anything that I'm noticing in my mind, the busyness of my mind, how I'm reacting to things, that's me calling myself out. I am in no way a perfect being. I know that. Uh, Kadusha, awesome. Thank you for coming. Um, Bernadette, wonderful. Hey, sweetie, I'm so glad you are here. And Claudia, oh, great, Claudia, you guys are done um, uh, traveling. Uh, great, love that. I love getting some of this feedback, and I know it might feel awkward, but don't hesitate in the middle of class if you want. Jump up there. I'm always taking a glance, and so if you've got a question about something and say like, ah, that didn't work for me, let's stop. Let's talk. Use this benefit of being able to actually talk to a being. That would be me. And if I don't know, I'm gonna tell you I don't know. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Bernadette. I'm glad that you came, honey. Uh, and uh, good to see you, Claudia. All right, everybody. I'm going to take a little bit of a break, and then I'm going to log back in, ready for Empower. If you want to join us, come on and join us. Uh, it's going to be an hour and 15. Remember, you guys, we made a compromise. We're not going to do an hour and 30, but we are going to do an hour and 15 today. Kind of get it, get it moving. All right, everybody. Namaste. Good to see you all. <laughs> if you think I was talking about you, maybe I was. No, I wasn't. All right, y'all.